Hello everyone, I'm a lab technician in the Western Blot Detection Department of Wuhan Boaster Biological Engineering Co. Limited. Western blot experiments are often used to determine the expression of proteins, quantitatively or qualitatively, in tissues or cells. The experimental steps are cumbersome, and every detail in the experiments may have an impact on the results. Next, I will share with you my practical experience over the years. First. Let's take a look at what a complete Western blot experimental process looks like. It can be roughly divided into the above 12 steps. Protein extraction. Protein quantification. Sample loading. Electrophoresis. Membrane transfer. Blocking. Primary antibody incubation. Secondary antibody incubation chemiluminescence detection. This is our Boaster product, used in each step of the Western blot experiment. Okay, next I will use the Boaster antibody CYP1B1 product number PB9546 as an example to demonstrate it for you. Step 1. Choose an antibody. When doing Western blot experiments, the choice of primary antibody is very important we need to pay attention to the following four points precautions. 1. Whether the protein is modified. 2. Protein expression. 3. Whether the protein has an alternative spliceosome. 4. Determine the molecular weight of the target protein and select the appropriate gel concentration. Step 2. Protein extraction. These are the products that need to be used in the protein extraction process. Configure lysate. Estimate the total amount of sample to prepare lysate. Add 10 ul of protease inhibitor. In 10 ul of phosphatase inhibitor per 1 milliliter of lysate. Adherent cells. Scrape off cells with a cell scraper. Transfer the culture medium containing the cells to a centrifuge tube. Suspension cells. Shake the flask gently. Transfer the culture medium containing the cells to a centrifuge tube. Centrifuge, 3000 RPM, 3 minutes. Discard the culture medium. Add 1 milliliter of pre-chilled PBS wash solution. Rinse twice. Transfer the washing solution containing the cells to the EP tube. Centrifuge, 3000 RPM, 3 minutes. Discard the washing solution. Add lysate according to the ratio of adding 100 UL of lysate for every 10 UL of cell pellets. Mix well. Lyse on ice for 30 to 60 minutes. Centrifugation, 10,000 RPM, 10 minutes. Tissue. Take an appropriate amount of tissue and weigh. Add ripple lysis buffer containing enzyme inhibitors at a rate of 1 milliliter of lysis buffer per 0.1 gram of tissue. Grind well. Transfer the homogenate to a centrifuge tube and lyse on ice for 30 to 60 minutes. Sonication. Centrifugation, 10,000 RPM, 10 minutes. Take the supernatant. Precautions. 1. Try to keep the sample in a low temperature environment during the experiment. 2. Avoid unnecessary components in the extract. It is recommended to use RIPA lysis solution. 3. It is recommended to sonicate the lysed protein sample to make protein quantification more accurate. Protein bands clearer and background cleaner. Sonication time 2 seconds, interval 2 seconds, Power 100 to 200 watts. Step 3. Protein quantification. These are the products that need to be used in the protein quantification process. Prepare standard curve. Add standards and surrogate samples. Add color developer. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. OD value measured by microplate reader. Create standard curve and calculate protein concentration. Precautions 1. 
protein quantification must be done before the experiment. Two, the standard curve should be freshly prepared for each protein quantification. Three, before choosing quantification, it is necessary to understand the contraindications of each method. For example, the BCA method prohibits high concentrations of reducing agents and metal chelating agents in the lysate. Step four, protein denaturation. These are the products that need to be used in the protein denaturation process. Add loading buffer to the sample. 90 to 100 degrees Celsius boiling water bath for three to five minutes. Precautions. One, for multiple transmembrane proteins, it is recommended to heat at 70 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Two, the denatured protein can be stored at negative 20 degrees Celsius for at least two months. Three, avoid repeated freezing and thawing of samples. Four, add a certain volume of loading buffer to keep the final concentration of each sample consistent, generally adjusted to three milligrams per milliliter and the loading volume is 10 UL. Step five, gel preparation. These are the products that need to be used in the gel preparation process. Install the glass. Formulated separating gel. Pour in separation glue. Add water to level and let stand for 30 minutes. After the gel is polymerized, pour out the distilled water and blot dry with filter paper. Formulated stacking gels. Pour in stacking gel. Insert the comb and let it sit horizontally for 30 minutes. Precautions. One. Ensure that the pH of the separating gel is 8.4 to 8.8, .8, and the pH of the stacking gel is 6.8. Two, ammonium persulfate should be prepared as fresh as possible. Three, the gel needs to solidify slowly, otherwise it will cause the glue to be too hard and cause the glue to burn. Four, TEMD is toxic and volatile. Try to operate it in a fume hood and increase or decrease it according to the temperature. 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, according to the normal amount. Step six, protein loading. These are the products that need to be used in the protein loading process. Assemble the electrophoresis rack. Pour into the electrophoresis solution. Add sample. Precautions. 1. 20 to 50 UG well cells, total protein extracted from tissue. 5 to 10 NG well recombinant protein. 2. Try to keep the same amount of protein in each lane and the same volume as possible. 3. Fill empty lanes with an equal volume of loading buffer. Step 7. Protein electrophoresis. Voltage 80 volts. Start electrophoresis. Bromophenol blue runs to the junction of the stacking gel and the separating gel. Adjust the voltage to 120 volts. Stop electrophoresis when bromophenol blue runs to 0.5 centimeters at the bottom of the gel. Precautions. One, under the conditions of time permitting, the electrophoresis time should not be as slow as possible. Two, the electrophoresis solution is not recommended to be reused. Three, protein marker is not 100% accurate. Generally, there is an error of about 5%. Step eight, protein transfer to membrane. These are the products that need to be used in the protein transfer process. Making transfer clips. Tapping glue. Put them in the order of fiber pad, filter paper, gel, NC membrane, filter paper, fiber pad. Put the transfer clip into the transfer slot. Pour the transfer solution. Transfer membrane. 
150 MA, 70 minutes. Precautions. 1. Wet transfer of protein is recommended. 2. For macromolecular proteins, greater than 200 KD, the methanol content can be reduced to 5 to 10 percent. 3. Ponku Red can be used to detect the transfer result after the film transfer is completed. It is not accurate to judge whether the transfer is successful or not just by looking at whether the marker is transferred to the film. 4. Constant Current 150 MA Tank Transfer Film 8% for 80 minutes 10% for 70 minutes 12% for 50 minutes Step 9. Closure These are the products that need to be used in the closed link. Take out the transferred NC membrane and put it in the washing solution. Wash for 10 minutes. Repeat three times. Pour off the washing solution. Add blocking solution. Block at room temperature for 90 minutes. Precautions. 1. It is recommended to use experimental grade skim milk powder. The preservatives in general skim milk powder will interfere with the binding of antigen and antibody. 2. The blocking solution should preferably be prepared fresh. Step 10. Antibody Incubation These are the products that need to be used in the antibody incubation process. Pour off blocking solution and add primary antibody. Put in refrigerator and incubate overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Precautions 1. It is recommended to use a dedicated antibody dilutant to effectively reduce the nonspecific binding of the primary antibody and effectively improve the dilution. Effectively increase the stable storage time of the primary antibody after dilution. 2. It is recommended to incubate the antibody overnight for a more adequate antigen-antibody reaction. Step 11. Washing. These are the products that need to be used in the washing process. Discard primary antibody. Wash for 10 minutes. Repeat three times. Pour off the washing solution. Add the secondary antibody and incubate at room temperature for 120 minutes. Discard the secondary antibody. Wash for 10 minutes. Repeat three times. Precautions. 1. It is recommended to use TBST for washing. For some antibodies, TBST can produce stronger signal than PBST. 2. The number of washings should not be too much, otherwise there will be loss of protein on the membrane, and it should not be too small, which may cause high background. Generally, 10 minutes is recommended. Final step. Detection. These are the products that need to be used in the testing process. Put the NC film into the luminescence color meter. Cover the configured luminescence substrate with the NC film chemiluminescence imager, machine exposure imaging. Precautions. 1. It is recommended to use a highly sensitive luminescence solution for chemiluminescence detection which can try to avoid false negatives for low-abundance proteins. 2. Since the fluorescence method provides the possibility of multi-channel WB, it can detect phosphorylated protein and total protein at the same time. And multiple proteins without molecular weight can be detected at the same time. But it should be noted that it cannot be used due to the overlapping of epitopes. So. These are all the steps involved in Western Blot Experiment. If you want to get more experimental tutorials, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.